So I think we've heard a lot about CAR T-cells at this meeting and there's really a lot of interest now, uh, especially as European centers are starting to come on board with the EMA approved CAR T-cells. And so there's really a lot of questions around the practical management of these patients. How do we select patients? How do we manage them clinically? Issues around cytokine release syndrome or CRS, also issues around the neurotoxicity. And so I think I just want to focus uh, briefly on the cytokine release syndrome, the CRS. And there, the issues that we're dealing with is we know some of the factors that can lead to CRS. We know that disease burden uh, can be a contributor. We know that the type of uh, vector that we're using, whether it's a CD28 as in the Kite Gilead product or in the Novartis product for one b is going to affect probably the level of, of cytokines that are being released, but also the timing. So it's important to understand what patient are you treating? Is it a patient with leukemia? Is it a patient with lymphoma? What's the disease burden? And, and which vector you're using, which product you're using. And so once you have those elements in place, you know, what I'm recommending to centers is you need to have guidelines. And, and the guidelines are important because the different companies do have some different recommendations. But if you're in a situation where, you know, in one room you have patient getting ALL, you know, CAR T's from Novartis, Kimraya, and in the next room you have a patient with lymphoma who's getting the Kite Gilead product, Yaskata, you can't have different sets of uh, guidelines. So I think every center needs to sort of integrate uh, the information that's available, have established guidelines that really are consensus for that group. And then it's not one size fits all. You still have to take into account who are you treating, what's the disease, what are the risk factors for cytokine release syndrome, what are the risk factors for neurotoxicity, and what is the timing? So is it early on, is it late? Are you seeing both CRS and neurotoxicity? And, and that's going to drive decisions about how we treat. When do you use tocilizumab? When do you use steroids? When should you integrate them? Should you even consider other drugs like cetuximab? And so just to give you a few scenarios in terms of how I would, I would approach that, obviously the first line therapy for CRS is tocilizumab. On the other hand, because tocilizumab blocks the receptor, it does not affect IL-6 levels. So if you have a patient who has both CRS and some early signs of neurotoxicity, and you give them tocilizumab, you may actually precipitate neurotoxicity because the levels of IL-6 are actually going to go up in the, in the CSF. So I think in that patient, the options you have are either to give tocilizumab and at the same time steroids, or you could consider giving sultuximab. Sultuximab is also an antibody, but it blocks the cytokine. So that actually will bring down the levels of the IL-6. So those are the things that we're still learning on how to best manage. If you have a patient who really has pure neurotoxicity, then you probably want to stay away from drugs manipulating IL-6 and really focus on steroids. We use dexamethasone, other centers use solumedrol. I think those are sort of things that are equivalent. But the key here is really to have, have guidelines in terms of the management. And then the other important thing, well, two important things, one is how do you grade these toxicities? And, and we're in a situation now where there's the Lee grading, there's the pen grading, there's the CARTOX grading, and, and what are we doing with that? So you can't have one product graded according to pen and the other one according to Lee, because again, it's the same situation. You know, which patient am I treating when I get called in the middle of the night? Which grading system I'm supposed to use? So the, the ASTCT, or what used to be the ASBMT, had a conference last June in, in Bethesda, and they basically put together a consensus meeting, about 50 people were there, academics, experts in CAR T-cells, uh, industry, FDA, and so forth. And, and they came up with a consensus document, which was now published. And these recommendations, both for CRS and neurotoxicity, are really clinically based. So you're not dependent on a CRP level, you're not dependent on IL-6 levels. Uh, in terms of the neurotoxicity, it's something that you could do at the bedside. Um, you don't have to have an ophthalmoscope or any special equipment. You don't have to get an MRI. And so I think these are really valuable clinically. And, and these are now available online uh, through the ASTCT uh, website. They're available through the mobile app. And so we're really encouraging the community to adopt these. We're encouraging companies to include these in clinical trials so that we really speak in one language in terms of how to grade the toxicity. And these are also the ones that the CIBMTR, the US registry, is using to collect outcomes on CAR T cells. And the CIBMTR has worked closely with EBMT here in Europe to, to homogenize this approach so that the European centers, the US centers, and really, really worldwide, that we're collecting the same type of data.
There are going to be some differences between the FDA and the EMA in terms of some of the, the, the details they want to be collected. But I think if we can really push to have sort of a common thread in terms of what data we're collecting, that's really going to help us globally understand what's going on. And, and the final recommendation I make to centers who are sort of embarking on, on what is really exciting times because we're, we're using these game-changing treatments in our patients, is this is really a multidisciplinary team approach. This is not about the hematologist or the transplant doctor or the lymphoma doctor, depending on who's delivering it. You really have to have an integrated approach where you bring in your ICU team, you bring in your neurologist, and we really take care of these patients globally so that we provide the best outcomes. I think what's striking is that these drugs work in patients who have really no other option. They do have toxicity, it can be acute, it can be quite impressive, uh, but at the same time, most of it resolves, and then patients who respond really benefit uh, tremendously from these drugs.